Hey guys, Josh here from the Landscapes. Hope everyone's having a great day today. We did a 12 by 16 inch canvas with just three colors today, blue, black, and white. So get out your cold colors, grab your winter coats, and uh, learn how to paint this painting with us. We're gonna show you how to do it, everything you need to do step by step. First, check the description down below. You can find uh, all the supplies we used. If you don't have any, click the link down there. You can go buy your supplies right through Amazon. Come back and paint in a couple days, right? But for those of us ready to paint right now, we're gonna get started. We're gonna do it just like this. How you doing today, guys? Hope everyone's having a good day today, right? Uh, I recently had a couple paintings sell, so what I'm gonna do is kind of replace those paintings with uh, with a new one, right? So we had blue, black, and white, just three colors today. Three, three colors, right? That's all you're gonna need today. I've already prepped the canvas with Bob Ross liquid white, right? Just wanna have the littlest bit, just to, where you can see the, you know, the ridges of your fingerprint is really all you wanna have. And uh, we've got a 12 by 16 inch canvas today, and we're just gonna recreate this sort of cold winter scene with just these three colors. So we're gonna use six tools, uh, the one and two inch brush, the uh, fan brush, the palette knife, and then some micro brushes, right? Little micro liner brush. Where are we at here? Everything's backwards. Micro liner brush and a micro fan brush, okay? If you guys don't have these, you can get them on my Amazon shop. The link will be down below. Uh, and we'll get started, okay? Now, since we only have three colors to do, we're gonna be doing a lot of the same three colors. So if you see blue, black, white, depending on where we go, right? I wanna leave a lot of this area white. If we're gonna do a lot of clouds, you don't wanna cover it with too much paint to start. So let's see, let's get a little bit of our blue, a little bit of the black, and we'll just come up here and just start dropping down. You can see because the canvas is wet, that these colors just blend perfectly together. And you can just sort of blend anything you want out. Why don't we make this big giant cloud shape right here? Just because that's how it came out, right? We're not, we don't really plan anything. We're just sort of letting it fly. And right here, we're going to have this huge giant kind of face of a cloud coming down. And why not? We might as well just do the rest, Josh, right? We're going to swipe in from the bottom. And we're going to create this kind of sheen on our water just from going side to side you guys see what i'm doing right just pulling in from the side and i'm leaving this area in the middle sort of white okay down here it doesn't matter we're all gonna fluff it all up but right across there just very lightly i want to have this little sheen little difference like the light maybe is coming down from right here right now we're gonna take our big two inch brush and we're gonna start to blend all this stuff okay and you can blend it into your lighter area and it will remain light you don't want to get rid of all the color Okay, always gotta finish our sides, right? Gonna do that, finish the top. I'll get underneath the easel once we get done filming. And finish that, you guys don't have to watch that, right? And then we're just gonna swipe over back and forth. Just sort of blending, doesn't have to be a certain shape, right? And we're gonna come over very lightly, otherwise we're gonna get rid of this light area. So just a couple hairs of the brush, right? Just very little pressure. Because the more and more we blend, the more, you know, this blue is going to go into that black and all the white's going to disappear, okay? So just very lightly. I'm always on your bottom, come from the side. Never start in the middle and go to the edge because you'll have this big line, right? And then you'll have to blend it all out. So start from the side, come to the middle, make sure we get our whole bottom down there. And now, I mean, it's almost a pretty good representation. I'm not trying to make an exact, you know, reflection down here, but it looks good. I like the way it looks. Now, why don't we take some of our same two colors, black and blue, right? I'm just gonna mix them up. Just the teeniest little bit of paint. Oh, we don't want a whole lot. All I wanna do is kind of throw some shadows underneath this bit of, bit of cloud, right? And it comes in, and we got some under there, some here, some there, some everywhere, right? Now we're gonna come back in, still haven't washed our one inch brush. I just wanna blend some of these shadowy areas into our clouds. Okay, just in different spots. And then whatever we don't like, we can always cover up and or change or go back and forth or do this or that. We can change it all. So don't worry if it gets all, you know, to the point where you, you just don't like the way that it looked anymore, then you can fix it, okay? Now we're gonna come in with our liquid, our titanium white, right? And just go over the top of those, you know, stay on the outside edges of our clouds where we were. Doesn't all have to connect, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be going the same way. 
just and leave some of our shadows in there, right? We don't want to cover up too many of those shadows. We're going to wash off this brush real fast. If you guys don't know how I use to, uh, what I use or, or how I wash the brushes, you can find it. I have a channel, I have a video on my channel. Go over and take a look. We're not going to take time to show you here. All right, we're just going to very lightly just sort of bring in and connect these bits in the middle, right? Just being very light, very wispy, sort of far away clouds, right? And again, they don't have to touch, and it doesn't have to be the same amount of light everywhere or dark. You know what I mean? It could be super bright and thick in some areas. It could be more gray in other areas. It's totally up to you. All right, we're going to take our brush, we're going to pull to this side, and we're going to pull to this side, and they're starting to meet in the middle. Now we've got this sort of far off, very faint sort of white cloud up there. All right, nice and beautiful and soft, but that's not what Josh likes to paint. We like to paint dramatic sort of scenes around here, right? So, why don't we take this? And we're going to throw like a whole other giant chunk of that dark shadowy color in here, okay? Just with the knife, just pushing it in, mush it, mush it into that canvas, right? In different places. It doesn't, again, doesn't all have to be the same. You want it darker areas, lighter in areas, totally up to us, okay? And we're going to come in and that's, this is going to push that big white cloud back a little bit, all right? Now we got this big you know, a bit of dark coming in. Or you could say that that is the bottom of your cloud, right? Whatever you want to do. It's, it's not up to us to tell, you know, the, the end user what to see, right? People are going to see what they're going to see. And this just didn't end up being as dark as I wanted to, so we're going to come back in and really darken it up. Some blacks and blues. <clears throat> Always remember you can use blue as a shadowy color with the black. It's so beautiful. There we go. Right, boom, 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 boom. Coming down. And the best part about the sky is you can literally just play with it until you like the way that it looks, right? If you ever get a big chunk area, just go over, give it a couple little, little mini circles. You can be good. And we got all these different blues and blacks and all sorts of things right there in our in our cloud. Now we're going to come back in with one more layer of white, right? It's going to separate and push all those other things back. There we go. I want it really thick on this white one in the front, right? And then we're going to, when we go to blend it out, it's going to sort of just fade, fade into the bottom color, right? I'm just going to mix it in. So here we're coming in very lightly. Very lightly, right? Just so light. Otherwise, especially with this white, you will blend it away and it will turn, you know, into this grayish blue really quickly, okay? And again, you don't have to mix every single area. There's some very white spots in here. And we're doing that on purpose, guys, so you have these different colors, right? Even in the white, it's going to be a different white. Now you have all these little bits where it's kind of layered, sat on itself, and all sorts of things. Again, you just play with it until you like it. I have the, you know, ability to look back in the camera and go, okay, might look cool if there was a little bit of white right there. And if we just sort of mix that in a bit, and then we could fluff it and we could do whatever we want to do just to get that one little bit. And this looks, looks fantastic. I like that it's nice and dark up there. But I do want to do just a little bit of sort of light, lighter anyway. All right, sort of get these to, just fade into nothing, right? Just very gray into this sky. And you'll get these cool little bits of depth. Almost dropped my big old two inch, house, two inch house painting brush. You get these cool areas of depth and it almost looks like it's going back, right? Totally up to us, whatever you want yours to look like. Doesn't have to look like mine. Just sort of showing you guys some techniques, right? Okay, we're gonna come back. We're gonna grab some of that blue and black or black and blue. If you're keeping track at home, a little bit of the white because this is it's going to be a little further off in the distance, so I want it to be a little bit lighter in color. And seeing as we only have these three colors, you know, one little bit too much white will change, you know, this dark color completely. So just mix it in sparingly. 
you want it to be dark and again it's going to get lighter when we put it up here as well okay let's see really like this dark blue area and I don't want my mountain there's there's so many bits of the sky that I like that I don't want to cover up maybe we can come in this way and then back up the hardest part is you can't even though you love your clouds, you can't start your mountains down here, right? It's just, it's not going to look perspectively correct. So let's grab it up. We'll just start making some decisions, Josh. Come in. I want to save some of that bluish area, get those clouds in there. Maybe we're coming up over here. And sometimes when you just, when you cut in and just make something, you know, just barely visible, it, it makes a person, you know, want to know what that is even more. Then we're going to come down, we're going to drag some of this paint down, different directions, doesn't matter, right? We're just literally putting some, some dark color on here so when that we start to blend, it's going to be light and dark in different areas all on its own, okay? Watch the magic that happens here. Gonna grab this, so you can see, if yours is too close to the color of your sky, you want to change it just a little bit, right? It just needs to be a little gray. And with all this liquid white that we forget that's underneath the canvas down here, that's what it's going to mix with. So anything that you have on your palette is going to be a little bit lighter color when you put it back up onto your, your actual mountain, right? We get some deep, deep dark shadows down in there. And that's what's cool with when you're doing this too, is it'll show you where you can put your snow or what your mountain is going to look like. And then if you don't like that, you can change it completely. But, you know, we got to have different bits of different mountains coming in at different angles. That's what you gotta have, guys. That's what I gotta have anyway. We're gonna bring it almost about right down to where our water line was way back there, right? Now we have this giant, giant bit of mountain and I like really just making these little imperfections, right? I don't want it to be a straight line. So every so often we throw in a couple little humps and bumps. Maybe this guy continues up along you know, and the summit is off in this direction somewhere. Or anywhere that it's too pointy, right? I like to give it a little bit of roundness. Because it's rare that we're going to get this crazy sharp point. Okay, again, you can play with it however you want. Until you like the way that yours looks. Now, down here with our 2-inch brush, we're just going to mix this up a little bit. Just at the base. I'm only using really the top corner of the brush. And you see it like this, because I don't want to lose too much of this down here. Just mix it up so we really can't tell where the mountain sort of starts and stops, right? And that's what I want. Now let's come in here, gonna get a bigger chunk of blue and black because we want a big, big, big pile. I'm only gonna put the littlest bit of white in here with this one just because I don't want it to get I want it to be darker than this color down here, okay? So not too much white. We don't want to make it too light, otherwise we're not going to see them. And what are we making, Josh, you ask? Well, we're going to make some trees. Okay, and these trees, actually, let's come in and we're going to do our snow first. I'm trying to get too far ahead of myself. Where are we at, 13 minutes? All right, so for snow, we're going to use white and blue, right? Blue is our shadow. Blue works for summer scenes, winter scenes any sort of scenes, right? But a lot of times it can look too blue. So I take a little bit of dark and kind of mix that in there and it just dulls it down a little bit, okay? Now we gotta decide where our light's coming from. Okay, it almost looks like from the clouds that all of our light's coming from this way. It's lighting up here, shadow underneath this big thing. So let's put all of our highlights onto this side and our shadows onto this side. So let's take our blue and one. Uh, we're gonna come in and just very lightly just touching the canvas and pulling down. You can go in different directions, you know what I mean? Make it look different. And then whatever paint comes off of the knife, which isn't a lot to start, it's a very small bit. All right, whatever paint comes off, let it come off. Wipe off your knife, come back, get a little bit more, and just make your shadows. All right. And then you want to have your knife at a at almost a 90 degree angle for me because my canvas is like this, right? If you're painting on a table, you want it flat. But depending on your easel, adjust it. You almost want the the handle to hit the thing as you're doing it, right? Mine comes down and hits my easel all the time. And that's the angle that you want to be at. 
Okay, you don't all have to pull in the same direction either. You can come over here and pull this way. I mean, maybe we'll make like a little ridge that goes down this way. And it, it, you know, it's not very bright right now. We're going to rectify that soon. Okay, we're just sort of putting in our shadows where we think they may have been. A couple little darker bits of blue, just straight up blue. All right, you can scrape it. Bring it, drag it down, put some of that darker blue back in there and make it really deep, right? And this is almost a negative image of what we're going to, to actually see because this looks like highlights versus our shadows, but I'm telling you it's not. I'm gonna grab our bit of white up here, real thick and chunky. And again, pulling in different directions as we go down, right? And come down this way. Don't want to cover up all of our shadows. And then you can take a step back and look at it. Maybe there's a cloud in the sky that's casting a shadow onto the mountain or whatever. It doesn't all have to be the same, okay? And again, it doesn't even have to be in the same direction. You can take it, pull this one over here. And as you get down to the bottom, you don't have to worry about much because we're gonna get it all foggy anyway. Let's see, maybe on top of this guy is a bit of snow. Maybe back there, just on the tops of the hills. It lights up, maybe it doesn't. We can go back and cover it up if it's too bright. Right? All depends on what we do with our knife. Depends on what your mountain's gonna look like, okay? Come back again, grab up some more white, flatten it out, pick it up, and then we're gonna come in like this. Grab this sucker. And then we've got our little ridge that sort of comes down from this guy, okay? Pushes all the rest of that mountain back now that we have this bit. And again, you just sit and play with it until you like the way that it looks. Again, it's easier when you're planning out to use those shadows that you've already made, right? And that way you don't have to come up with it. You just gotta sort of fill in the blanks, right? Maybe this guy comes over here and comes down. You never know. Gotta have your shadowy side, so don't get rid of your shadows, right? We'll pick up a big chunk of paint right there. Right, maybe this way. I'll start to blend in this white with some of this blue. You can go back, make some more color up real fast, even just enough to just change that to a shadow. You know what I mean? Totally up to us. I just don't like straight lines, so I gotta add this bit for my own self, right? Gotta make it look how you want it to look. Not how mine looks, not how your friends looks, or your aunt or your grandma who passed away who used to paint, right? Doesn't matter what theirs look like. It's what ours looks like. And mine will look different than yours. Like, don't get discouraged. You, you know, especially if you're a beginner, you're not, it's not gonna end up like this, right? But the more and more that you practice the techniques, You'll find that one time where you touch it and you go, wow, oh God, that worked. Like, I gotta remember how I did that or what I did in order to make it look like that. And you just gotta test out things and try. It's literally how I do it. And then I try to pass my learning on to you guys, right? All right. And take our two inch brush now and just tap. Just using the top corner again, kind of pushing down. You can see how it bends the bristles. Right, following the angles that we went on. So, as you can see, my white paint hand came down like this over here. And I don't like doing it in this straight line, so you, a lot of times you'll see a U with me when we paint. I don't come down this way, and then we came over here and we started pulling down this side, so that's what we'll do over here. And all it does is, is just create that little bit of fog that we need at the bottom in order to make our next bit of paint work. Right, it's gotta be light down here. And again, we're trying not to lose that sheen on the water. But you don't wanna have these lines where you you know, see a straight line where your knife ended. So make it foggy and don't make your fog on a straight line either. Okay, now we're gonna come back, take our, our 10 inch fan brush that we made up here. And why not, let's put a little bit. And we could do a real close up sort of painting or we could make it look further away. Why don't we try that? We're gonna save the fan brush. We're gonna come in with our one inch brush, just get a little bit on both sides and hold it at an angle so we're only using one side at a time. All right, and then we can come down and we can make like little bits of 
little bits of forest down in here that came down our mountain. Maybe these guys turn and they live over here to come down this way. All about angles. Right, we don't want to have too many. And then we're going to fog them up anyway, so don't worry about it. Let's take these though, see what happens when we lift them up. Get these straight lines up like they're real far off trees in the distance, right? A bit of far off forest back there. The more you lift up, the higher they're going to become. And you can take them, you can swipe them, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. And now it looks like we got this bit that kind of grows down on this side of our of our lake. You can even put some of those real soft, just changes, little reflections back in there. We may end up losing them, we may not. And then we'll come in from this side, and why don't we bring in like a bigger bit of forest that lives over here. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, well, that was too much. So that happens when you don't clean your brushes enough, guys. There we go. We'll make this far off bit of land back here. And to do that, I like just touching the knife and then way back, and you don't want this thick at all, okay? You want it to be the very thinnest line that you ever made. And remember, it doesn't have to connect. And we're gonna take it very gently. We're gonna pull it to the side so it becomes even further away and further thinned back there, okay? Don't wanna see much. There's the snip, the teeniest little bit back there, okay? Let's bring this bit of forest. We're going to come down here and we're going to stop about there. I don't want to go too far into that beautiful bit of water line that we just made, right? We're going to bring this guy. We're going to sort of reflect him down so we sort of have the same shape on the top and the bottom, right? It could be a little bit of uh, uh, land coming out over there, right? Then we can take and decide where we want our land to live. Pull down our reflections. To the side again, trying to save these little bits. They catch your eye, I'm telling you. They will catch your eye. Okay, we can even take our fan brush, turn it upside down, and just add a little bit of just ground, a little bit of ground to the water. And again, we're going to come back, get a little bit of that dark color, sort of make where our, our land is going to live just by cutting in a little dark line. Okay, I know it might be hard to see it. It'll make sense when we get that white in there. I really don't want to be able to see through these too much, especially down around the bottom, so make it dark. It looks really neat. We'll have like one more thing coming in from this side. It'll look good. Again, with the knife, just getting a little bit of it. It's hard for you guys to see, I'm sorry. With this bright light, right? I don't like starting right out at the front, just in case it drops off too much. And it's hard to fix, you know what I mean? So I'll start near the back, drop in our water, and again, it does not have to be neat or touch or be the same on each side. It doesn't have to do anything like that. You just want this little bit of water out here, okay? Little bit. Again, we're trying not to ruin this bit of sheen on our water. Okay, we want to have that. Let's see, it'll we'll come in with a giant bit of a tree here. So the last bit, we're gonna make up this huge pile of paint, right? More than you think you need. That's what I always say. Use more than you think you need, and then you can leave it on your palette for a day or two, and maybe come back with me tomorrow, or on the weekend, and paint another one with the paint that you still have, right? I've got multiple, you know, blue, white, and, and black paintings that you can do. Let's see. All right, babe, we're gonna highlight all that stuff. I'm gonna show you guys a trick about highlighting, okay? A little more blue back here. Maybe this side's a little bit closer than that one is. Not a lot, though. You don't want it to stand out too bright, especially how bright our, our thing is here. If this is white back there, it would bring it you know, too close to us. Okay, so we got our giant pile of paint. We're gonna come down. What time are we at? 24 minutes. This is good. This is gonna be a Bob episode right here. Go like this. 
grab up our big bit. In order for the tree to be closer to us, it needs to be taller than our mountain, right? So we're going to come down like that and just drop in this giant sucker straight down over here, okay? And then why not? Let's put in like a little friend off to the side. Okay, I didn't cut my peak off. This peak we shouldn't really have worried about, but I mean, I knew it was going to get covered. We're going to come in from the side. You can see how my brush is sideways to the canvas because I'm only using the very front edge right here, right? And then the further and further we go, you can see the brush rotate this way. So now I'm using more and more bristles. And then we're going to come down like that, very thick and very dark. Right, we got to block out everything behind there so we can't see through it. Okay, there we go. Same thing with this guy. Put a little sharp point to him, a couple little bits. And again, even your trees, you know, they don't have to touch. You can skip a little bit, skip a bit of the trunk, do something, you know what I mean, to change it doesn't always have to look so perfect, right? There we go, this guy's off to the side. Over there. There we go. That's a beautiful painting, guys, with some floating trees, and we're done. See you later, have a good day. Oh, no, all right. All right, we're gonna take our half inch round, which I didn't say that we were gonna use, but just because I love it, let's use it. I'm gonna come down in here, get that same dark color all the way down the bottom of our canvas, right? Bottom of our trees. Okay, now you be careful about how far you come out. How much of this light area do I want to lose, right? You know, I want to have bushes at the bottom and some ground and stuff, but how much of that light colored area do I really want to get rid of is the question. And it's about that much for this painting anyway. Remember, if your paint is not thick, the next part's not going to work, so come back, make up some more, right? Make sure it's very chunky. I want it to be coming off the canvas into our living room or into your art studio, right? Nice and chunked out. Chunky, chunky. So it sticks to the canvas and we pull away and it's still there, right? That's going to make us have these beautiful textured bushes, okay? And all of our highlight paint is going to fall into all these little bits that we're leaving all chunky on the canvas, right? Like that. Use up the last of the stuff that I had right over here. And if you if you were me, you'd be able to look down and it looks like little bushes and little leaves sticking out, okay? And that's what we want. All right, why don't we do this real quick? Now you guys can at least see the bottom, right? Now we're back. Back in business, Josh. We can see the bottom. What keeps bugging me is just how straight that these came off. So I'm going to do one bit that's like hanging out, right? One little imperfection that's stuck out over there. There we go. Just so it's not a straight line. And again, yours, you can do whatever you want with yours. This is how I'm doing it with mine. Okay, now I want to take a lot of liquid white and our titanium white, maybe a little bit of blue, just a little though, because it's very strong, okay? Don't want our trees to be super bright blue. Maybe they're in the shadow, they're not catching all that sun, right? And I want to start up here Let's do a straight line right at the top, and now we're not going to touch, we're not going to even, we're barely touching, right? Barely. Following our little Z shape that we made all the way down the tree, okay? <clears throat> you don't need to touch hard in order for it to stick. If it doesn't stick, then your paint isn't thin enough, so go back and get some more liquid white. Run it through the thing. And with these micro fan brushes, you're gonna run out very quickly and you're gonna be back to your pile, okay? I'm just telling you right now. But they give you all these cool little details that um, you know our normal bigger brushes sort of have trouble with. And we're gonna come down here, and as we since we started at the top and we're mixing with all of this 
dark color, our pile is changing, okay? Let it change. Especially if you wanted to highlight these, you need it to be bright, but not as bright as these ones that are closer, right? And our blue and our white again. We're gonna go on this other tree. I've come back with a new pile of blue and white, so it's a little bit different color, right? Again, we're just gonna come down very nice, very soft. And this guy, you can go as far as you want down, right? Until we hit our bushes down here. Now your brush will fill up with all that dark paint that we're picking up. So wipe it off, come back in and just add a little bit more. You can see there's differences even between these two trees in the blue. That's not going to work. You need to clear off that brush. in with that thick paint is going to create the mud, right? The dreaded mud. <clears throat> Grab the last little bit of the liquid white that we have in here. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to get a whole nother chunk of white, get a whole big bit of our liquid white, and just start to make up this soupy little mess, okay? A little bit of blue in there. Just a touch, not a lot. Really gonna mix it up so it's this nice kind of brightish bluish color, like sky blue, right? And we'll take a little bit of this dark in there so it's not so super bright. Come back in. Now remember, we mix this with liquid white so it's very soupy and very wet, right? We're gonna tap my brush into it. And if you can see on the camera, all those little bits that are sticking up, that's what you want your canvas to look like, okay? Now all my light's coming in from this side, so I'm going to start on this guy first. Make a little bit of bush there. Maybe there's some over here. Come down. I don't want to cover up everything, right? Wipe off all that thick, dark paint that gets stuck into our, our, our bush, right? Come back in. And remember, you don't want to kill all of your dark. Leave the dark areas, okay? There's a bit of light right on the edge of that. There's a touch back there in our on our land, right? Much darker back there, much less noticeable. <clears throat> Let's clean off this fan brush. Okay, now for here, I want to take some of that darker pile that we started getting into once it we picked up all that stuff. And get that on both sides. I'm gonna get a little bit of this white, or you know, the whitish blue that we made. And just get it a little bit sort of grayish blue, okay? And then we're gonna come back and just every so often, just gonna highlight a couple of these suckers, you know, from about an inch off the bottom to the top. And that way you get all these differences. Look at that, look at this beautifulness, right? All these differences. Now we're gonna come back in, scrape in a couple real hard twigs, right? We're scraping through all the paint to reveal the canvas underneath that is still white. Right? And all the dark areas where, where that's where our, our little twigs grow, right? Grow from down there. Make as many as you want. Just makes it look more neat, right? Some of them 
even grow out into our seam. Can't stop them. Can't do nothing about it. And there's a couple big ones over here that are look smaller because they're much further away, right? Mix in some of that. And then we got a finished painting, guys. Now, I know we haven't used the liner brush. You can use it if you want to create little twigs or branches or stuff that comes out. Right? Maybe there's like a big old thick branch that comes out of this sucker just right out into our landscape, right? Remember, thick down at the bottom, thin at the end. Don't have to tell anybody that still, do we? There we go. Just coming out. Growing wherever it wants to grow, right? Maybe there's another one that comes right out into that light area that we've been trying to save for something. And it, so that would really stick out, right? But uh, yeah, I mean, you could continue your water along in here if you if you wanted to or if you, you thought it would look neat if maybe it comes in a little bit right here right up to us it's not going to make it all the way across of course we're going to just flatten that bit out just a little just so there's a teeniest little bit of a noticeable difference which if you frame this you wouldn't even notice that right but looks great to me guys let's take a little bit of our our liquid white and why don't we come and just put on the top of this sucker trying to leave some of that dark color in there too right like that it's got a little bit of shadow a little bit of depth a little bit of 3d-ness right gotta have a 3d man nobody wants a 2d painting gotta make it look 3d so it makes it look like it's wrapped it's sticking out there waiting for something Something or somebody. Let's even throw like a couple more little swish off in different places. Right? It's never just a never a perfect thing. Maybe those are thorns. Who knows? But we're all set, guys. When we get to 38 minutes today, that's not too bad. Not too bad for a magnificent little painting like this, right? I'm gonna do my birds real quick and say goodbye to you guys. So listen while I. Uh, while you're watching here, go to amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art in order to get supplies that you need, right? Everybody needs supplies. You can go to my Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com slash happy landscape art or search for happy landscape art. You can find me on Etsy, same thing, Facebook, uh, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And of course, go to my website, uh, happylittlelandscapes.com, right? Happy, where are we at? Happylittlelandscapes.com. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. Depends on where you're watching me right now. You know what I mean? That would depend where I send you. A little sucker back, way off in the distance back there. So check out happylittlelandscapes.com. You can find all of my social media platforms. Thanks for sticking with me while we painted this painting today. It turned out fantastic. Like it always does. Always does, right? Cover up down here just to finish our canvas off because we like having finished canvases. Fill in those bits. Here we go. But yeah, follow me on uh, social media, subscribe to my channels, like my pages, all that. You guys already know. Sign this little baby. This is one of my favorite paintings, actually. It looks really neat. Sign it in there. So, like I said, this one will be available on Etsy if you guys want to buy it. See what it looks like on the sides for the buyer, right? We never show the sides. Only the buyer can see the sides. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the more you guys support my store, the more, you know, canvases I can buy and keep bringing you guys free painting videos, right? So go there, get a hat for $20 or a shirt for $20, some, you know, a coffee mug, a sticker, a laptop sleeve, you know, a pillow for the couch or the bed, all sorts of stuff for less than what, you know, you would think the paintings cost. The paintings are a little expensive, I admit. Uh, everything else, nice and, you know, cheap for everybody. So literally something in the shop for everyone. Go check it out, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next painting. See you this weekend, either for a drunk painting video or a, you know just a normal Sunday one, which is the one I like because I don't have a hangover and just feel terrible. So, you guys take care. Have a good day, and we're gonna see you guys on the next painting. Bye bye.